from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Long Distance. Mr. Pat McCracken in Hartford, Connecticut is returning your call, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks, operator. Put him on. One moment, please. Hello? Hi, Pat. Oh, Johnny. Hey, this message I found. Boy, I'm glad you called. Say, what under the sun are you doing in Los Angeles? Just down here for a confab with Jack Johnstone. You know, the guy who dramatizes the cases I handle and puts them on yeah, the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him my best. And I just wondered if you had anything out here I can do before heading back to Hartford. And if so, it'll give you a chance to put your travel charges on the expense account. Hmm? What else? <laughs> oh. Johnny, I got a wire from him just a few minutes ago. You contact Herb Schilling at the Greater Southwest Insurance Company right there in L.A. Okay, we will do. And you can address your expense account to them. Right. Oh, uh, uh, Johnny? Yeah? Have you got a gun with you? Sure, Pat, I always... Huh? Why do you ask that? Well, judging by Herb's wire, Johnny, you may need it. Bob Bailey. In the exciting adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. A young lady by the name of Scheherazade kept her audience of one enthralled for a thousand and one nights with one of the longest stories in history. That's a long time to devote to one chronicle... But some of CBS Radio's winning seven weekday dramas have put that record in the shade, entertaining audiences in the millions with many times a thousand and one days of continuing dramatic serials. Each weekday on the CBS Radio Network, there's a wealth of daytime drama, including such outstanding serials as The Romance of Helen Trent, The Couple Next Door, Ma Perkins, Whispering Streets, The Right to Happiness, The Second Mrs. Burton, and Young Dr. Malone. Monday through Friday, follow these absorbing, true-to-life stories. Only CBS Radio brings you the winning seven combination of top daytime dramas. Another important reason for the different sound of this CBS Radio station. And now, Act One of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Winsome Widow matter. Expense account out of one, $1.40 for a taxi from my hotel in West L.A. to Greater Southwest Insurance in one of those big office buildings on Wilshire Boulevard's Miracle Mile. Herb Schilling almost fell off his chair when I barged in on Hiya, Herbie. Look, I know that some of those new jet flights are pretty fast, but I only sent that wire to Pat McCracken a couple of hours ago. I didn't waste any time trying to make plane connections, Herb. Just flew out under my own power. Yeah. Uh, you're kidding, I know. But where were you when you got the word from McCracken? Right here in your own fair city. Oh, I wish I'd known that. Even those couple of hours could have been saved. Oh? What's the big problem? A little matter of a liquor store holdup. Only I'm afraid this one wasn't so little. Then tell me on. Yeah, sit down. Johnny... For some reason or another, these places that sell bottle goods are a pretty frequent target for stick-ups. Here in Los Angeles, there have been quite a few of them over the years. I'm surprised you insure them. And needless to say, premiums are pretty high. And at least so far as our company is concerned, the policies are somewhat limited. That is, insofar as maximum allowable coverage is concerned. Makes sense. On the whole, we've been pretty lucky. By that, I mean we've had to pay off relatively few claims. But now in the case of Willie Lehman... Who's uh, Willie Lehman? His store is out in West Los Angeles at 10921 Santa Monica Boulevard. And that's only about a mile from where I'm staying. Well, the old man opened up his place late in 1951. Oh? Yes, 61. Early in 1952, he had his first holdup. The bandits got away with something over $900. So he bought some insurance from us. Well, go on. Since then, there have been seven more attempted stick-ups there. A total of eight in as many years, huh? Yeah. Then your company must be getting a bit tired of paying off. No, because after the second time... He, uh, know how to use it? He certainly did. He had a lot of medals from some German outfit he was in during the last war. 
Anyhow, he suffered no more losses. That is, until last night. Oh, how much? In money. What else? Something like over $400 out of the cash register, as nearly as the police can figure from the register slip. Well, couldn't Lehman tell you how much? No. Because you see, Johnny, he also lost his life. Oh. And I take it you wrote his life insurance, too. That's right. $30,000. I see. Look, it's a little late in the day, but you want to go out there and check with the police? Sure. I'll be in touch. Item two, $50, deposit on a drive-your-own car. I passed up 10921 Santa Monica Boulevard and went right on out west to West L.A. Police Headquarters. There I ran down Sergeant Mike Kirby, who was covering the whole affair. Mike turned out to be a young, alert guy on the ball and completely cooperative. That's right, Dollar. Eight times since he opened the place in 51. And that's way out of line. Yeah, I should certainly think so. And the last three stick-ups have been within the past ten weeks. Hmm. Sergeant, my contact at the insurance company, Herb Schilling, tells me that Willie Lehman managed to fight off most of the bandits. He told you right, Dollar. Lehman was not only a crack shot, but I guess he was pretty quick on the draw. It was only last month that he killed one of the two men to try to hold him up. Two men? What about the other? I'm way ahead of you. Huh? We find that other man, we find the killer. Probably. Uh, it would seem like a pretty safe bet. But look, Mike... If there were so many tries at this one place and so many all at once... Stake out? Sure, somebody watching over the place. We tried it. As long as we had somebody there, you know, sitting in the back or working behind the counter or just watching from across the street, nothing happened. But the minute we took them away, bing, another hold-up try. Somehow they seemed to know whenever we had the place under surveillance. And more important, when you didn't. Well, what have you got to work on? Oh, nothing but a couple of bullets, I'm afraid. Want to take a run over and look at the place? Sure, Mike. Why not? The liquor store was closed, but there were lights on in the living quarters above it. We knocked a couple of times, but got no answer. So Mike used the key that he had. He and his men had been careful to leave things as they'd been at the time of the killing. He was lying right there, Dollar, as though he'd come around the end of the counter. Uh-huh. Near that door to the back room, huh? Yeah, yeah. That door also leads upstairs to the apartment. He must have taken a couple of shots at the bandit. You see where the bottles were broken over on the shelf? Yeah. No bloodstains or anything. I guess he missed for once. But not the bandit. Caught him right in the heart, Johnny. Bullet went in at the right shoulder, then down through his heart and stopped against the lower left rib. Of course, until you get a lab report on that bullet. Oh, must be his wife. The why she didn't answer when we knocked on the door. Good evening, Mrs. Lehman. Oh, no. Are you here again? Please, Sergeant, do you have to come around at all hours? Hmm? Oops. Hold everything. Lehman had been 61, but his wife, Gloria, couldn't have been more than 30. Tall, dark, she was obviously very proud of her highly commendable figure. Yeah, and she was pretty. That is, almost... Maybe it was just a little too much makeup, especially around the eyes that she knew how to use so well. A little bell had rung in the back of my head. Yeah. And since I'd noticed a phone booth at the gas station next door, I had him three ten cents for a call. Johnny. That's right, Herb, and I'm sorry to call you at home. That's all right, Johnny. But there's one thing I forgot to ask you about when I talked to you. Yeah, what's that? Who's the beneficiary of old man Lehman's life insurance? Why, his wife, Gloria, Johnny. I Thank you, I... Herb Schilling. <laughs> Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. When Fidel Castro was biding his time in a remote fastness in Cuba, only a network like the CBS radio network had the equipment and manpower to go in and bring out the background of his revolutionary movement, his own words on what was to come and how it would come about. When major news breaks anywhere in the world, only a network like CBS radio has correspondence on the scene or within short range. Only news like CBS News is global in scope and is up to the minute as a direct report from on the scene. That's why millions prefer CBS News on CBS Radio and its affiliated stations to every other reporting medium for speed, for accuracy. Remember, when the story's big, only a news-gathering force like ours can scoop it up and send it slicing through space to your set, packaged for immediate delivery. Get it first, and get it right. Make CBS News on CBS Radio 
your listening post on the world. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Winsome Widow Matter. After the phone call to Herb Schilling, I went back into the liquor store where Sergeant Mike Kirby was still talking to Lehman's widow, Gloria. You mean you don't plan to reopen the store at all, Mrs. Lehman? Not if I can help it. I'll sell this gum to the first person I find has enough money to buy it. And then what, Mrs. Lehman? Why don't you call me Gloria, huh? Everybody else does. And who are you, anyway, Johnny? You aren't a cop, and you don't look like a dick. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, Mr. Dollar's here because of the insurance involved. But from the insurance company? That's right. Well, listen, Willie had some insurance. I know. I mean, on himself, as well as the store. I don't know how much it is, but he promised me that he'd buy some. It was your idea that he insure his life? Sure, an old guy like him. I figured he'd up and die sometime while I was still young and beautiful. So why shouldn't I let him provide something for my future, like they say? Or whoever thought he was going to die as soon as this. Whoever planned and carried out his murder? You mean somebody planned to kill him this way? Just where were you when it happened, Gloria? I was upstairs in bed, asleep. Look, I've told the cops all about it. Well, you must have heard the shooting. I'll say I did. And what did you do? Well, I put on a robe and come running down here. To... Well, I see the cash register open and poor old Willie laying there. And when I see that he's dead, I phone the police. You didn't see anybody else down here? Well, by the time I got here, whoever did it was gone. You don't seem at all upset over your husband's murder. Now, you want me to put on an act? Don't you know that he was twice as old as I am? Then why did you marry him? Well, you know how it is. A chance to settle down and let somebody else support you for a change. Made him happy to have me around, and I guess I liked it okay, too, for a while. But gee, what a bore. All he did was talk about getting enough money to go back to the old country. Well, who wants to go back to any old country when you can have such a ball in this one? I know I always have, even when I was married to old Willie. Of course, he just didn't always know where I was half the time. Well, don't you like having fun, Johnny? Hmm? I mean, with people more like your own age? Hmm? How old are you, Johnny? Now, don't answer it. Now, don't answer it. The place is closed. Well, it might be for me, Mrs. Lehman. Oh, yeah. Kirby. Yeah? And listen, Johnny... Oh. If you can get me that good. insurance money in a hurry, well, yeah, good. I'll well, want you to know I appreciate it. Gloria, how long ago were you married okay. to Willie Lehman? Last September. Yeah. Oh? Yeah. Now, why do you say it that way? Okay, I told I'm you, Johnny, I married the, the old man so he could take care of me. Excuse me, Johnny, I got to get back to headquarters. Ballistics downtown is sending up a report on the bullets we found. Oh, good. Also, Bob Golden picked up a bum in a saloon, and it looks like he's the one that did this job. <laughs> Picked up the guy that killed Willie? Looks like it. You want to come with me, Johnny? Well, do you or don't you? Yeah, Mike. I'll go along with you. I told you. I told all those other cops. I'm the guy that heisted the dough out of Layman's Liquors last night. Then you shot and killed him, Benny. Oh, no. No, I tell you, I didn't do it. That's the truth. So help me, that's the truth. Are you trying to say somebody else went in there and shot him after you left, Benny? Well, I don't know. There was no reason if you'd already taken his money. But I don't know. How should I know? You, you think I stuck around there after I got his dough? How many shots did you fire at him, Benny? How many shots? Why, I didn't fire none. You saw that gun the cops took off of me. It was made of rubber. That's all it was. It was made of rubber. If I hadn't got stupid and gone out and got drunk and showed it to somebody and told them how I got away with the money from that liquor store with it, you think these dumb cops had ever got wise to me? You didn't fire a single shot. How could I? I waved my rubber gun at him. He, he reaches under the counter. He comes up empty, so he, he gives me the dough and I leave. You're lying, Benny. You make a paraffin test, Mike. Yeah, and I think this is the result of it. Well, Conroy? Uh, the paraffin test was negative, Sergeant. No sign of powder on either of his hands. Also, Sergeant... Yeah, you see? Uh, I told you. I told you I never had no real gun. All, so all right, time. Benny. I told you all I did was rob that joint. Shut so up, Benny. Want me to Shut up. Yeah, Conroy? Also, Sergeant, here's the report from downtown on the bullets from ballistics. 
Good. Yeah, let me have them. And also, they returned that gun of Mr. Lehman's that they found beside his body. There's no prints at all on it. Now, Johnny, is there anything else? Hey, look at this. Yeah? Conroy? Yes, sir. Get this bum out of here. Lock him up upstairs. Yes, sir. Come on, <laughs> Betty. You wise guys can't pin no murder rap on me. You, you wait till I get a lawyer. Oh, yeah, we'll wait. What's it say, Mike? Listen. The bullet that killed Willie Lehman and the bullets we pulled out of the wall of that store. Huh? Johnny, they all came from Lehman's own gun. Well, how about that? In other words, with the help of that phony rubber pistol, Benny somehow got Lehman's gun away from him. Maybe Lehman had already pulled off a couple of shots and missed. But the one that killed him... Oh, yeah. The paraffin test showed no powder on Benny's hands. Then he must have worn gloves. He must have killed Lehman. You want to bet? Then who did? Hmm. Well, first, I think I'd better get some proof. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. drop in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, Have you tried a Pepsi lately? Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Listen, Mike, you're overlooking one thing. Like what, Johnny? That Benny's a shaky old bum, a wino. Suppose he'd gone into that liquor store with a real gun instead of that phony little rubber one you boys found on him. Well... You think for a minute he could have stood up against a crack shot like you say Lehman was? Well, now, that's besides... Of course not. Now, could he get Lehman's gun away from him and kill him with it? Ever since he kept the gun in that store, not a single hold-up man has got the better of him. He even killed one of them a month ago. That's very true. All right. Now, I think I can get your killer for you. Only you have to let me get her my own way. Her. That's right. You mean Lehman's wife, Gloria. That's right. Johnny, I thought of her, too. Motive, opportunity, everything. But proof, proof. Let me handle it my own way. But if she didn't do it... If I'm wrong, it won't be any reflection on you, on your record. Oh. I see what you mean. Okay. We'll take my car. And you got to promise me one thing. What's that? That you'll stay outside, that you won't make any move until I ask you to, no matter what happens. Well, now, Johnny... Otherwise, you can try hauling her in yourself. But, of course, if you're wrong about it. Okay, Johnny, let's go. Well, I'm glad you came along, Johnny. I'm getting awful tired of having all those cops around here. All right, listen, Gloria. And you are going to get that 30000 insurance money for me in a hurry, aren't you? You know how long it'll take for me to get the rest of his stuff here in this state... A guy dies, it's sometimes a couple of years before they... What's the matter, Johnny? 30000 huh? What? I thought you didn't know the amount of that insurance. Well, Johnny... Gloria, the only recent attempts at a holdup were made between the times the cops had a stake out here, right? Yes, that's right, Johnny. Then because... somebody must have passed the word around when everything was clear. You think so? Gee, that's... Yeah, and I also think that the only people who knew when the police weren't here... Were you and your husband. Well, you don't think he'd go around blabbing it? No, I don't. Well, then... Now, wait a minute, Johnny Dollar. Don't get your back hair up, Gloria. Not yet. What? Your husband was good enough with a gun to have thwarted seven robbery attempts in a row. That's right. So I think he could have prevented his own murder. 
if he'd had his gun last night. Well, of course he had it. They found it laying next to his body. Somebody was glad to see these holdups, these attempts anyway, because it provided a perfect excuse to kill him. Now, listen, he Johnny. He put the gun you... under the counter, didn't he? Sure. Right here, under the register. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put my gun there. What are you up to, Johnny? Get behind the counter a minute. About where he'd stand when a customer came in. Well, sure. Right about here. So last night, a man came in and he stood about here. He pulled a toy gun out of his pocket, demanded the money in the register. What is this? What would your husband have done? Well? He'd have grabbed the gun. Like this. <laughs> You're pointing that right at me, you know. That's what he would have done. But there was no gun there last night. Because you had taken it. And when the bandits left, you were standing up on the stairs there at the back. You'd come down from your apartment. What are you talking about? The bullet that killed him went from his right shoulder down to his heart. Down to the lower ribs. Because you were up on the stairs when you shot him. Then you fired a couple of shots into the wall and you call the police. You can prove that, Johnny, enough for the cops. When I tell them, Gloria... But you won't, Johnny, because it happened just the way you said. But you're never going to tell them. Gloria! It. Too late, Johnny! No! 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 You took the bullets up! You tricked me! You tricked me! That's right, Gloria. Dirty! Double-crossing! You lying cheat! You happy, Sergeant? Pretty obvious, I guess, right from the beginning. But as I said, getting proof. Or in this case, a confession isn't always so easy. Anyhow, expense account total, including mileage on the rental car and the trip back to Hartford, I'll call it 250 even. Okay? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Can you get premium gasoline performance at regular gasoline price? Find out what so many other car owners have found. In three out of five cars, regular priced Sinclair Dino Gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines, saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino and still get premium performance and mileage. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino Gasoline. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Jackson Dex, Joseph Julian, Jack Grimes, Bob Maxwell, and Peter Fernandez. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Tomorrow begins a new week's hilarity with Arthur Godfrey Time on the CBS Radio Network.